Zervanism is an extinct branch of Zoroastrianism in which the divinity Zervan is a first principle primordial creator deity who engendered equal but opposite twins, Ahura Mazda and Angra Mainu. Zervanism is also known as Zervanite Zoroastrianism and may be contrasted with Mazdaism. In Zervanism, Zervan was perceived as the god of infinite time and space and was aka one alone. Zervan was portrayed as a transcendental and neutral god, without passion, and one for whom there was no distinction between good or evil. The name, Zervan, is a normalized rendition of the word, which in Middle Persian appears as either Zervan, Zeruvan or Zarvan. The Middle Persian name derives from Avestan Zeruvan, time, which is grammatically without gender. Topic. Origins and background Topic. Although the details of the origin and development of Zervanism remain murky for a summary of the three opposing opinions, see Ascent and Acceptance below, it is generally accepted that Zervanism was a branch of Greater Zoroastrianism voice 1957-157-304, that the doctrine of Zervan was a sacerdotal response to resolve a perceived inconsistency in the sacred texts Zainer, 1955, intro, see Development of the Twin Brother doctrine below, and that this doctrine was probably introduced during the second half of the Achaemenid era Henning, 1951, Locke. CIT, Boyce 1957-157-304. Zervanism enjoyed royal sanction during the Sassanid era 226-651 CE but no traces of it remain beyond the 10th century. Although Sassanid era Zervanism was certainly influenced by Hellenic philosophy, the relationship between it and the Greek divinity of time Kronos has not been conclusively established. Non-Zoroastrian accounts of typically Zervanite beliefs were the first traces of Zoroastrianism to reach the West, leading European scholars to conclude that Zoroastrianism was a monist religion, an issue of much controversy among both scholars and contemporary practitioners of the faith. The Avestan word Zeruvan is etymologically related to the late post-Vedic Sanskrit word Sarva, meaning all, entire, and which carries a similar semantic field in signifying a monist quality. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Evidence of the cult. Topic. The earliest evidence of the cult of Zervan is found in the history of theology, attributed to Eudemus of Rhodes c. 370-300 BCE. As cited in Damascius's Difficulties and Solutions of First Principles 6th century CE, Eudemus describes a sect of the Medes that considered space, time to be the primordial father of the rivals Oromastas of light and Arimanius of darkness. Dalla, 1932-331-332. The principal evidence for Zervanite doctrine in the polemical Christian tracts of Armenian and Syriac writers of the Sassanid period 224-651 CE. Indigenous sources of information from the same period are the 3rd century Kartir inscription at Kaaba i Zartasht and the early 4th century Edict of Mihr Nars, head priest under Yazdegerd I, the latter being the only native evidence from the Sassanid period that is frankly Zervanite. The post Sassanid Zoroastrian Middle Persian commentaries are primarily Mazdian and with only one exception, 10th century Dankard 9.30, do not mention Zervan at all. Of the remaining so-called Pahlavi texts only two, the Manag-i Krad and the selections of Zatspram both 9th century reveal a Zervanite tendency. The latter, in which the priest Zatspram chastises his brother's un-Mazdian ideas, is the last text in Middle Persian that provides any evidence of the cult of Zervan. The 13th century Zoroastrian Alema i Islam response to Doctors of Islam, a new Persian apologetic text, is unambiguously Zervanite and is also the last direct evidence of Zervan as a first principle. There is no hint of any worship of Zervan in any of the texts of the Avesta, even though the texts as they exist today are the result of a Sassanid era redaction. Zainer proposes that this is because the individual Sassanid monarchs were not always Zervanite and that Mazdian Zoroastrianism just happened to have the upper hand during the crucial period that the canon was finally written down Zainer, 1955-48, Duchesny Geilman, 1956-108. 
In the texts composed prior to the Sassanid period, Zervan appears twice, as both an abstract concept and as a minor divinity, but there is no evidence of a cult. In Yasna 72.10 Zervan is invoked in the company of space and air and in Yash 13.56, the plants grow in the manner time has ordained according to the will of Ahura Mazda and the Amisha Spentas. Two other references to Zervan are also present in the Vendidad, but although these are late additions to the canon, they again do not establish any evidence of a cult. Zervan does not appear in any listing of the Yazatas Dala, 1932. Topic: History and development. Topic: Topic: Ascent and acceptance. Topic: The origins of the cult of Zervan remain debated. One view: Zainer, 1939; Duchesny Geilman, 1956; Zainer, 1955. Intro considers Zervanism to have developed out of Zoroastrianism as a reaction to the liberalization of the late Achaemenid era form of the faith. Another view: Swedish school theory, e.g. Nyberg, 1931, reiterated in Zainer 1955, conclusion proposes that Zervan existed as a pre-Zoroastrian divinity that was incorporated into Zoroastrianism. The third view, Cumont and Shedder, reiterated by Henning, 1951, Boyce 1957, is that Zervanism is the product of the contact between Zoroastrianism and Babylonian Akkadian religions. For a summary of opposing views, see Boyce, 1957-304. Certain however is that by the Sassanid era 226 to 651 CE the divinity infinite time was well established and as inferred from a Manichaean text presented to Shapur the first in which the name Zervan was adopted for Manichaeism's primordial father of greatness enjoyed royal patronage it was during the reign of Sassanid Emperor Shapur I that Zervanism appears to have developed as a cult and it was presumably in this period that Greek and Indic concepts were introduced to Zervanite Zoroastrianism. It is however not known whether Sassanid era Zervanism and Mazdaism were separate sects, each with their own organization and priesthood, or simply two tendencies within the same body. That Mazdaism and Zervanism competed for attention has been inferred from the works of Christian and Manichaean polemicists, but the doctrinal incompatibilities were not so extreme, that they could not be reconciled under the broad aegis of an imperial church. Boyce, 1957-308. Decline and disappearance Following the fall of the Sassanid Empire in the 7th century, Zoroastrianism was gradually supplanted by Islam. The former continued to exist but in an increasingly reduced state and by the 10th century the remaining Zoroastrians appear to have more closely followed the orthodoxy as found in the Pahlavi books see also Legacy, below. Why the cult of Zervan vanished while Mazdaism did not remains an issue of scholarly debate. Arthur Christensen, one of the first proponents of the theory that Zervanism was the state religion of the Sassanids, suggested that the rejection of Zervanism in the post-conquest epoch was a response and reaction to the new authority of Islamic monotheism that brought about a deliberate reform of Zoroastrianism that aimed to establish a stronger orthodoxy. Boyce, 1957-305, Zainer is of the opinion that the Zervanite priesthood had a strict orthodoxy which few could tolerate. Moreover, they interpreted the Prophet's message so dualistically that their God was made to appear very much less than all-powerful and all-wise. Reasonable as so absolute a dualism might appear from a purely intellectual point of view, it had neither the appeal of a real monotheism nor had it any mystical element with which to nourish its inner life. Zainer, 1961. Another possible explanation postulated by Boyce 1957 -308 is that Mazdaism and Zervanism were divided regionally, that is, with Mazdaism being the predominant tendency in the regions to the north and east Bactria, Margiana, and other satrapies closest to Zoroaster's homeland, while Zervanism was prominent in regions to the south and west closer to Babylonian and Greek influence. This is supported by Manichaean evidence that indicates that 3rd century Mazdian Zoroastrianism had its stronghold in Parthia, to the northeast. 
Following the fall of the Persian Empire, the south and west were relatively quickly assimilated under the banner of Islam, while the north and east remained independent for some time before these regions too were absorbed. Boyce, 1957-308-309. This could also explain why Armenian, Syriac observations reveal a distinctly Zervanite Zoroastrianism, and inversely, could explain the strong Greek and Babylonian influence on Zervanism, see types of Zervanism, below. The «twin brother» doctrine Topic. Classical Zervanism is a term coined by Zayner intro to denote the movement to explain the inconsistency of Zoroaster's description of the «twin spirits» as they appear in Yasna 30.3-5 of the Avesta. According to Zayner, this «Zervanism proper» was genuinely Iranian and Zoroastrian in that it sought to clarify the enigma of the twin spirits that Zoroaster left unsolved." Zayner, 1961. As the priesthood sought to explain it, if the malevolent spirit lit, Angra Mainu and the benevolent spirit spent a Mainu, identified with Ahura Mazda were twins, then they must have had a parent, who must have existed before them. The priesthood settled on Zervan, the hypostasis of infinite time, as being the only possible absolute from whom the twins could proceed, and which was the source of good in the one and the source of evil in the other. Zayner, 1961. The Zervanite twin brother doctrine is also evident in Zervanism's cosmogonical creation myth that, in its classic form, does not contradict the Mazdian model of the origin and evolution of the universe, which begins where the Zervanite model ends. It may well be as proposed by Cumont and Shedder, that the Zervanite cosmogony was an adaptation of an antecedent Hellenic Kronos cosmogony that portrayed infinite time as the father of time, not to be confused with the Titan Cronus, father of Zeus, whom the Greeks equated with Oromastas, i.e. Ormuzd, Ahura Mazda. Topic: <laughs> Creation story. Topic: The classic Zervanite model of creation, preserved only by non-Zoroastrian sources, proceeds as follows In the beginning, the great god Zervan existed alone. Desiring offspring that would create heaven and hell and everything in between, Zervan sacrificed for a thousand years. Towards the end of this period, Androgyne Zervan began to doubt the efficacy of sacrifice and in the moment of this doubt Ormuzd and Ahriman were conceived, Ormuzd for the sacrifice and Ahriman for the doubt. Upon realizing that twins were to be born, Zervan resolved to grant the first-born sovereignty over creation. Ormuzd perceived Zervan's decision, which he then communicated to his brother. Ahriman then preempted Ormuzd by ripping open the womb to emerge first. Reminded of the resolution to grant Ahriman sovereignty, Zervan conceded, but limited kingship to a period of 9,000 years, after which Ormuzd would rule for all eternity Zaynar, 1955 Christian and Manichaean missionaries considered this doctrine to be exemplary of the Zoroastrian faith and it was these and similar texts that first reached the West. Corroborated by Anquital de Peron's erroneous rendering. A Vendidad 19.9, these led to the late 18th century conclusion that infinite time was the first principle of Zoroastrianism and Ormuzd was therefore only the derivative and secondary character. Ironically, the fact that no Zoroastrian texts contained any hint of the Born of Zervan doctrine was considered to be evidence of a latter-day corruption of the original principles. The opinion that Zoroastrianism was so severely dualistic that it was, in fact, ditheistic or even tritheistic would be widely held until the late 19th century Dalla, 1932-490-492, cf. Boyce, 2002-687. Types of Zervanism According to Zayner, the doctrine of the cult of Zervan appears to have three schools of thought, each to a different degree influenced by alien philosophies, which he calls materialist Zervanism, aesthetic Zervanism, and fatalistic Zervanism. He proposes that all three have classical Zervanism as their foundation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Aesthetic Zervanism. Topic: 
Aesthetic Zervanism, which was apparently not as popular as the materialistic kind, viewed Zervan as indifferentiated time, which, under the influence of desire, divided into reason a male principle and concupiscence a female principle. According to Duchesne Geilman, this division is redolent of Gnosticism or, still better, of Indian cosmology. The parallels between Zervan and Prajapati of Rig Veda 10.129 had been taken by Weidengren to be evidence of a Proto-Indo-Iranian Zervan, but these arguments have since been dismissed to Chesney Geilman, 1956. Nonetheless, there is a semblance of Zervanite elements in Vedic texts, and, as Zainer puts it, "...time, for the Indians, is the raw material, the materia prima of all contingent being." Materialist Zervanism Topic. Materialist Zervanism was influenced by the Aristotelian and Empedoclean view of matter, and took some very queer forms. Zainer, 1961. While Zoroaster's Ormuzd created the universe with his thought, materialist Zervanism challenged the concept that anything could be made out of nothing. This challenge was a patently alien idea, discarding core Zoroastrian tenets in favor of the position that the spiritual world, including heaven and hell, reward and punishment, did not exist. The fundamental division of the material and spiritual is not altogether foreign to the Avesta, Geti and Mainu Middle Persian, Manag are terms in Mazda's tradition, where Ahura Mazda is said to have created all first in its spiritual, then later in its material form. But the material Zervanites redefined Manag to suit Aristotelian principles to mean that which did not yet have matter, or alternatively, that which was still the unformed primal matter. Even this is not necessarily a violation of orthodox Zoroastrian tradition, since the divinity Vayu is present in the middle space between Ormuzd and Ahriman, the void separating the kingdoms of light and darkness. Topic: <laughs> Fatalistic Zervanism. Topic. The doctrine of limited time allotted to Ahriman by Zervan implied that nothing could change this preordained course of the material universe, and the path of the astral bodies of the heavenly sphere was representative of this preordained course. It followed that human destiny must then be decided by the constellations, stars and planets, who were divided between the good the signs of the zodiac and the evil the planets. Ormuzd allotted happiness to man, but if man did not receive it, it was owing to the extortion of these planets." Manag I carried 38.4-5. Fatalistic Zervanism was evidently influenced by Chaldean astrology and perhaps also by Aristotle's theory of chance and fortune. The fact that Armenian and Syriac commentators translated Zervan as fate is highly suggestive. Mistaken identity Topic. In his first manuscript of his book Zervan, R. C. Zainer incorrectly identified the lion-headed Leontocephaline of the Roman Mithraic Mysteries aka Mithraism as a representation of Zervan. Zainer later acknowledged this misidentification as a positive mistake, Zainer 1972, due to Franz Cumont late 19th century notion that the Roman cult was Roman Mazdaism transmitted to the West by Iranian priests. Mithraic scholars no longer follow this so-called continuity theory, but that has not stopped the fallacy which Zainer also attributes to Cumont from proliferating on the Internet. The legacy of Zervanism no evidence of distinctly Zervanite rituals or practices have been discovered, so followers of the cult are widely believed to have had the same rituals and practices as Mazdian Zoroastrians did. This is understandable, inasmuch as the Zervanite doctrine of a monist first principle did not preclude the worship of Ormuzd as the creator of the good creation. Similarly, no explicitly Zervanite elements appear to have survived in modern Zoroastrianism, though Western influences have encouraged monotheistic theologies among some modern Zoroastrian reformists that replace the omniscient but not omnipotent Mazda with a new doctrine of an omnipotent Mazda that is more like the omnipotent, more strictly monotheistic deities of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Manekji Dala explicitly accepted a modern Western version of the old Zervanite heresy, according to which Ahura Mazda himself was the hypothetical father 
of the twin spirits of Y30.3. Yet though Dalla thus, under foreign influences, abandoned the fundamental doctrine of the absolute separation of good and evil, his book still breathes the sturdy, unflinching spirit of orthodox Zoroastrian dualism. The sacrilege of Zervanism begins with a heterodox interpretation of Zarathustra's Gathas. Yes, there are two fundamental spirits, twins which are renowned to be in conflict. In thought and in word, in action they are two, the good and the bad. Then shall I speak of the two primal spirits of existence, of whom the very holy thus spoke to the evil one. Neither our thoughts nor teachings nor wills, neither our words nor choices nor acts, not our inner selves nor our souls agree. A literal, anthropomorphic, twin brother interpretation of these passages gave rise to a need to postulate a father for the postulated literal brothers. Hence Zervanism postulated a preceding parent deity that existed above the good and evil of his sons. This was an obvious usurpation of Zoroastrian dualism, a sacrilege against the moral preeminence of Ahura Mazda. The pessimism evident in Zervanite fatalism existed in stark contradiction to the positive moral force of Mazdaism, and was a direct violation of one of Zoroaster great contributions to religious philosophy, his uncompromising doctrine of free will. In Yasna 30.2 and 45.9, Ahura Mazda has left to men's wills to choose between doing good and doing evil. By leaving destiny in the hands of fate an omnipotent deity, the cult of Zervan distanced itself from the most sacred of Zoroastrian tenets, that of the efficacy of good thoughts, good words and good deeds. That the Zervanite view of creation was an apostasy even for medieval Zoroastrians is apparent from the 10th century Denkard, which in a commentary on Yasna 30.3-5 turns what the Zervanites considered the words of the prophet into Zoroaster recalling, "...a proclamation of the demon of envy to mankind that Ormuzd and Ahriman were two in one womb." Denkard 9.30.4 The fundamental goal of "...classical Zervanism," to bring the doctrine of the twin spirits", in accord with what was otherwise understood of Zoroaster's teaching may have been excessive, but, according to Zainer, it was not altogether misguided. In noting the emergence of an overtly dualistic doctrine during the Sassanid period, Zainer 1961 asserted that there must have been a party within the Zoroastrian community which regarded the strict dualism between truth and the lie, the Holy Spirit and the destructive spirit, as being the essence of the Prophet's message. Otherwise the re-emergence of this strictly dualist form of Zoroastrianism some six centuries after the collapse of the Achaemenian Empire could not be readily explained. There must have been a zealous minority that busied itself with defining what they considered the Prophet's true message to be, there must have been an «orthodox» party within the «church». This minority, concerned now with theology no less than with ritual, would be found among the Magi, and it is, in fact, to the Magi that Aristotle and other early Greek writers attribute the fully dualist doctrine of two independent principles, Orimastas and Arimanios. Further, the founder of the Magian order was now said to be Zoroaster himself. The fall of the Achaemenian Empire, however, must have been disastrous for the Zoroastrian religion, and the fact that the Magi were able to retain as much as they did and restore it in a form that was not too strikingly different from the Prophet's original message after the lapse of some 600 years proves their devotion to his memory. It is, indeed, true to say that the Zoroastrian orthodoxy of the Sasanian period is nearer to the spirit of Zoroaster than is the thinly disguised polytheism of the Yasht. Thus, according to Zainer, while the direction that the Sassanids took was not altogether at odds with the spirit of the Gathas, the extreme dualism that accompanied a divinity that was remote and inaccessible made the faith less than attractive. Zervanism was then truly heretical only in the sense that it weakened the appeal of Zoroastrianism. Nonetheless, that Zervanism was the predominant brand of Zoroastrianism during the cataclysmic years just prior to the fall of the empire, is, according to Duchesne Geilman, evident in the degree of influence that Zervanism but not Mazdaism would have on the Iranian brand of Shia Islam. Writing in the historical present, he notes that, under Chosra II R. 590 to 628 and his successors all kinds of superstitions tend to overwhelm the Mazdian religion which gradually disintegrates thus preparing the triumph of Islam thus 
What will survive in popular conscience under the Muslim varnish is not Mazdism, it is Zirvanite fatalism, well attested in Persian literature. Duchesny Geilman, 1956-109. This is also a thought expressed by Zainer, who observes that Ferdowsi, in his Shahnameh, expounds views which seem to be an epitome of popular Zirvanite doctrine. Zainer, 1955-241. Thus, according to Zainer and Duchesny Geilman, Zervanism's pessimistic fatalism was a formative influence on the Iranian psyche, paving the way as it were, for the rapid adoption of Shi, a philosophy during the Safavid era. According to Zainer and Shaki, in Middle Persian texts of the 9th century, Dari from Arabic Persian dar, time, eternity is the appellative term for adherence of the Zervanite doctrine that the universe derived from infinite time. In later Persian and Arabic literature, the term would come to be a derogatory term for atheist or materialist. The term also appears, in conjunction with other terms for skeptics, in Denkard 3.225 and in the scanned Gumanig wizard where, one who says God is not, who are called Dahari, and consider themselves to be delivered from religious discipline and the toil of performing meritorious deeds. Shaki, 2002 to 587-588. Bibliography. Topic. Boyce, Mary, 1957. Some reflections on Zervanism. Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies. London, SOAS. 19 304 to 316. Doi 10.1017 per seconds 0041977 extension 00133063. Duchesny Geilman, Jacques, 1956. Notes on Zervanism. Journal of Near Eastern Studies. Chicago, UCP, 15, 2, 108 to 112. Doi 10.1086 371319. Fry, Richard, 1959. Zervanism Again. The Harvard Theological Review. London, Cambridge. 52, 63-73. doi, 10.1017 per seconds 0178160000266687. Shaki, Mansur, 2002. Dari. Encyclopedia Iranica. New York, Mazda Pub. pp. 35-44. Zainer, Richard Charles 1940. A Zirvanite Apocalypse. Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies. London, SOAS, 10 2, 377-398. doi, 10.1017 per seconds 0041977 extension 0008-7577. Zainer, Richard Charles 1955. Zervan, A Zoroastrian Dilemma Biblo Moser ed. Oxford, Clarendon. ISBN 0-8196-0280-9. Zainer, Richard Charles The Dawn and Twilight of Zoroastrianism 2003 Phoenix ed. New York, Putnam. ISBN 1-84212-165-0. A section of the book is available online. Several other websites have duplicated this text, but include an introduction. That is very obviously not by Zainer. Zainer, Richard Charles 1975. Teachings of the Magi, Compendium of Zoroastrian Beliefs. New York, Sheldon. ISBN 0-85969-041-5. Further reading Yasna 30 translated by Christian Bartolome. In Taraporawala, Arash, ed. 1977. The Divine Songs of Zarathustra. New York, AMS. ISBN 0-404-12802-5, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List, Link. The Alema i Islam. In Dabur, Bamanji Nasarvanji, Trans, 1932. The Persian Rivayats of Hormajar Framers and Others. Bombay, K. R. Kama Oriental Institute. The Selections of Zadspram, as translated by Edward William West. In Muller, Friedrich Max, ed. 1880. SBE, Volume 5. Oxford, OUP, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List, Link. 
Denkard 9.30 is translated by Edward William West. In Muller, Friedrich Max, ed. 1892. SBE, Vol. 37. Oxford, OUP, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. The Cartier Inscription is translated by David Neil Mackenzie. In Henning Memorial Vol. Lund Humphreys, 1970. ISBN 0-85331-255-9.